Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. Well, it's been a busy morning as you can see. We've got some new additions and I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to talk to you about kidding and goat pregnancy. This is Cheryl here behind me and she was born here on this farm. In fact, I still have her mama. She's just about two years old and this is her first baby. Now I've been watching Cheryl very closely the last few days. While I didn't have a due date for her, I could tell that she was very close and there are some key signs that you wanna watch for. Of course, you're gonna see that belly just get really huge and in their last week or two, they're gonna get very uncomfortable. Probably waddle when they walk, maybe groan when they lay down, be laying down more and be a little bit slow to get up. But you definitely wanna make sure that they're still eating like they normally do and that they're ruminating. And that's very important. But other than just getting really big and uncomfortable, I've been checking the ligaments over her tail every day. Normally those ligaments will feel, it'll feel like a V and it'll feel hard, like a pencil almost. And they'll be tight, like, like incredibly tight rubber bands. And as they get closer to delivering, those will become a little more spongy and loose. And when they're really eminently about to deliver, you won't even be able to feel those. As you can see, the sides of her tail are very sunken in and that's because those ligaments are completely relaxed. Another really good sign that she was very close is, look at how big that udder is. This is what's known as bagging up, when the middle will become very tight. That's, that's tight like a soccer ball. When I came out to milk this morning, I found her in active labor. She really didn't show much stress or signs of pain and she had a really smooth birth. The baby was positioned very correctly and came out just like you would like. Feet first and then the nose presented quickly after that. She actually didn't even break the amniotic sac until the baby was out. So a very gentle, easy birth. She's really good for her first time. You can see Cheryl here is licking her baby now, but she was real hesitant to at first. So I did step in and clear the airways of the baby just to make sure that it could breathe. But I didn't want to go ahead and clean the rest of the fluid off the baby because I really want her to lick it. It's very important in their bonding process. It's also a really good stimulant for that baby to get up and try and nurse. The baby is very feisty and, and vocalizing, which is really stimulating her to try and take care of it. Because this is a first time mom and her, her teats aren't positioned in a way that's very easy for the baby to get to them, I'm gonna have to assist, I think. They stick out the back and that'll get a little bit better as the tightness on her udder subsides, but I'm gonna give them some time. Good for the baby to try. It's best for them to get on the teat themselves, um, but I will assist if I need to. You really want that baby to get colostrum. That's the first mother's milk that's full of her antibodies within the first hour if possible. They can only absorb those antibodies through their gut wall for the first 24 hours. So it's really important for them to get as much of that as they can in that first day. It's also really important for them to get some calories in them. Babies aren't born with a lot of fat on hand and if they don't get some of that milk in them pretty soon, they will lose some energy. And if they get low energy, then they stop trying to nurse. Sometimes moms won't want to lick the first baby if they know a second one is coming. They're kind of just more worried about delivering, but she seems to be done. So now she's paying a little more attention to this baby. Where you going? Oh, there you go. There you go. I like my girls to have lots of room when they deliver. It's good for them to be able to get up, lay down, walk around, and not get stuck against a wall. I've seen mothers with their vulva right up against the stall wall trying to deliver that baby, and it just makes it so much harder. They can also get their legs stuck against a wall, which is called casting or being cast, and I just want to avoid any of that. So I want them to be out in the open where they can move around, they can get to water or food if they want to. They don't feel like they're separated from the herd, although most does will isolate themselves a little bit when they're in labor. I also came out to find this girl, Calypso. She's also a two-year-old first-time mother. She had this big boy all on her own. And she chose to come into the barn where it's all nice and bedded and she had some privacy. But like I said, that's her choice. 
by the time I got out here this morning, this baby was dry and nursing, so she did a great job all on her own, and that's really what you want. So I walked away for a second, and she had another one. She wasn't showing any signs of contracting still. She seemed like she was having a little bit of pain, but I thought that was just her trying to pass her afterbirth. And I'm not completely surprised because that's the most common reason I see a doe not want to lick or attend to the first baby as much because she's worried about birthing the second one. And that's exactly what was going on here. I really thought she was big enough to have two. Now sometimes it can be difficult for a mother to decide whether to attend to the one that's up and crying or the one that needs to be licked. But so far she's doing a really good job. So we'll just stick around and supervise and make sure everybody's okay. <laughs> if there was any indication that she was not bonding properly with them or not feeding them, if they were having trouble latching on to the teats, then I would move her to a private stall. In general, I wanna be as hands off and use the least amount of intervention as possible. These does had to give birth out in the woods or in the pasture without my help. I want them to be able to do everything by themselves. That calling back and forth that the mom and baby do to each other is really important. That's how they'll find each other if they're separated and the mom and the baby will know their individual voices. So right now she's just establishing that relationship where they know each other's voices and smells. Also, as the babies eat her milk, their poop will start to smell like her. And you'll see often a doe will check and smell the butt of a baby as it starts to nurse. And that's just her verifying that that's actually her baby and that it's allowed to nurse on her nipples. A lot of times, especially in new moms, the teats will be blocked or they'll have a waxy plug. And you need to clear that. Make sure the milk is flowing and that it looks normal. And then when the baby gets close, I just help it a little bit and try and like aim that tea into its mouth until it gets a good latch like that. And then I just let go. And usually once they get the hang of it, this first day, first couple times, then they're pros after that. Sometimes babies get confused and they'll want to try and nurse on the human just because it's a warm body nearby. So if they start following me around, I just kind of get out of the way or aim them back at mama. It's pretty common to see this where they'll, they'll try to nurse on the wrong part or on each other. They're really just going for any warm spot and hoping that there's milk there. Got it. So this doe has a little bit of edema in her udder as well. This nipple's a little bit swollen, which is making it even more difficult. I'll put a little bit of anti-inflammatory cream, healing cream on there later on today, and probably a warm compress to bring that swelling down. But right now, these babies are able to drink and her milk is flowing really well anyway, so it's not really a problem I need to deal with immediately. You can see she's dripping a little bit of blood. We're still waiting for her to pass her afterbirth. That's the next really important step. If a doe retains her afterbirth, that can cause a uterine infection. And those are very hard to deal with. Antibiotics have a hard time getting to that part of the body. So we're definitely gonna stick around and make sure that she passes all of her afterbirth and that it, it also looks normal. Now after helping these babies just a few times, I've seen them both latch on their own. If your doe gives birth when you're not here or in the middle of the night and you don't witness it, and you're concerned that the baby hasn't nursed, you can usually tell by their behavior if they are vocalizing and really actively trying to nurse, or if they're very weak, like they haven't had anything to eat. That's usually a good indicator that they haven't. But another way that you can check is you can actually feel their loin right here and just very gently you want to put some pressure with your thumb and a finger on either side and if you feel any resistance there that means they have something in their belly and i'm actually even the little bit of nursing that this baby has done i can feel that there's something in there if that space feels very hollow and you can almost touch those fingers together then you know that that gut is empty and that baby really needs to eat
Another good indication that they're eating is the distinct milk mustache he's got going on here. <laughs> Little guy, he just had a nice drink. So once your babies are stable, meaning they're clean and warm and they've had a good drink, now it's time that we like to treat their navel. So they'll have a little bit of umbilical cord that's still, still hanging and it's kind of like a fresh open wound that can be a conduit for bacteria to get in there and cause an infection. And the way that presents itself, if you do get an infection of the navel, is you'll see swollen joints. Usually the front knees will swell up um, and that's treated usually with penicillin but we want to avoid that. So the simple thing to do is just get some nice gentle iodine. And I actually use the cap as a dipper, but you can get things that are designed to actually dip um, navels or teats. I fill the cap pretty much all the way. And then I just kind of hold the baby under their front armpit. <laughs> and I try to get the whole navel in there and push it right up against their body and shake it. So the whole thing gets covered in iodine. And that's it. And then he can go back to his mama for comfort. So in my area, I know that we're selenium deficient. We do give a loose mineral to all the goats, but sometimes you'll see babies born with wobbly back legs, and that can be a sign of selenium deficiency. So I give just a very small dose of the selenium and vitamin E gel. It has a little dial so you can measure out how much that you're squirting out. Put that in their mouth, squirt it in there. That's it. And you didn't mind that at all. Oh yeah, we had two little boys. And I think we're gonna name them Emilio and Esteban. So another thing you wanna watch for on the first day is that they pass their first feces and urine. The first poop will often look really dark and stringy. So it's gonna be this dark color and that's normal. Within uh, a day or two, sometimes that will turn like a yellow, look like a diarrhea, and that's just their body getting used to drinking milk. Sometimes that can be really thick and sticky, stick to their tail and dry on their butt, so you're gonna wanna clean that off. If it becomes really runny or it persists for more than a day or two, then they might need some electrolytes and um, possibly some antibiotics if they've got a gut infection going on. But that's really uncommon. Usually that just passes on its own. And once they dry off, you can kind of see their true colors. These guys are really red with a little bit of roning. And it looks like they're gonna have some frosted Nubian style ears. Cheryl here is uh, a cross. Her mom is a purebred Nubian, but her dad was a Kiko boar cross. And then these babies were sired by a boar buck. So right after your doe delivers, she may need a little bit of nutritional support. I think the best thing to give any doe is um, some backstrap molasses. This is really high in iron, calcium, potassium, and has some B vitamins. Plus it's sweet and gives them a little bit of energy. So I mix it in some hot water in a small volume, and then I will add it to a cool bucket of water so it's just a little bit warm. The hot water really helps it get uh, dissolved because this is very thick and get it into a nice solution so that she can drink it really easily. So there's no reason I wouldn't give this to um, a mother. If she doesn't need it, she won't drink it. And then usually some other goats will come over and take it from her. If I think she needs a little bit more support, some vitamins and minerals, I will give her some Power Punch. This is also known as Nutri-Drench. It's a molasses base, and it's just fortified with some extra supplements. If a doe is really struggling, or she develops any sort of post-birth infection, uterine infection, or mastitis, infection of the udder, then I will start her on um, a fortified B complex, and this is injected. This is just a really good supportive care thing to have on hand for any animal that is stressed or struggling with any other disease. This can help them recover faster. If I'm worried about her going into milk fever, where the calcium is leached from her bloodstream too fast, as she makes a lot of milk, then I like to have some CMPK on hand. This can be given orally, 
in a severe case of milk fever, you're gonna wanna call a veterinarian and get intravenous CMPK. If you're worried that a, a doe is low calcium before she gives birth, you can start this ahead of time. This really doesn't taste very good. Uh, often helpful to mix it with a little bit of molasses or the power punch just to get it down easier. And then for the edema in the udder, I'm going to apply this Dynamint. It's a very basic lotion that has peppermint oil and calendula in it. And these are both really good for healing and reducing inflammation. So this is just a good thing to have on hand for these does that have these really big udders, they get really tight. It's also a good way to stave off some congested udder or the beginning of mastitis. So I use this frequently on any of the does that I'm milking and I keep a close eye on anybody I'm not milking just to make sure that their udder is functioning properly. So those are just some of the basic things that I wanna have on hand. We're gonna go and give this warm molasses water to our new mama right now. They usually really appreciate the molasses water. It's delicious and it makes them feel good. They tend to be really thirsty after giving birth, but they seem to not just go out to the water on their own. But if you bring water to them, they tend to really want to drink it. I was gonna put it in a bucket, but they seem to just drink right out of this really well, so. If I were to grab a bucket, all the other goats would come investigate it. So this is a much sneakier way to get her what she needs. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, yummy, huh? Delicious. So it's only been maybe an hour since we were out here last and these babies are comfortably sleeping. They look nice and dry. Oh, I woke one up. My babies. So it looks like she's past her afterbirth. This is pretty dirty and honestly really gross, but that's about what it looks like. It's just kind of a thick, membranous sack. It'll be red and purplish. If it looks like green or smells really bad, then you would be concerned, but this is really pretty normal. And this mama passed her afterbirth. So you want it all in one piece like this. Again, it should be like purplish and red, but not green or not stink. This is like absolutely no odor. Yeah, totally normal. So these moms are both good to go. Just one more quick note about afterbirth. It can get stinky if you leave it. Of course, it's gonna start to decay and it will attract predators. So you wanna get it out of the area. You can either compost it, you can dump it far off in the woods, or what we like to do is feed it to our dogs. Occasionally, uh, a ewe or a doe will eat her own afterbirth. It looks like these girls aren't interested in doing that today, so we're just gonna get rid of it. You can see Cheryl here is still oozing a little bit of blood and mucus. And that'll actually continue for up to a few weeks after they give birth. They'll just sort of slowly shed any residual um, afterbirth from the uterus. And that's totally normal as long as it smells fine and is not an off color. Sometimes all that blood and mucus can get kind of crusty. So I will go ahead and clean up the back of her udder and her tail probably tomorrow. For today, I mostly just want to leave her alone and just keep a close eye on her, but not uh, mess with her too much. She's, she's had a long day. In these high capacity milking does, I'm probably also going to need to milk her out. I'm not planning on milking her regularly this year, but I do want to make sure that her udder is not really tight and uncomfortable. It can get congested or swollen and we don't want her to have to suffer that. So I'll probably relieve some of that pressure. These babies really aren't gonna drink enough to keep up with her milk supply at first. I'm glad that there's two. If there was one, they'd really have a hard time. Probably within a week, they're gonna be keeping up just fine. They're gonna be nursing so often on her. But for the first few days, I'm gonna have to kind of help her release some of that pressure. 
So I worry a lot more about the utter health of my goats than I do my sheep, and this is a good example of why. Goats tend to have big udders, especially most of my goats are dairy or crossed with dairy breeds. So they're designed to have a large milk capacity. But you can see her udder is on the ground, that teat is on the ground. It's possibly coming in contact with food and poop and other bacteria that could enter the opening of that teat and cause an infection called mastitis. So I'm always feeling for any hardness, tightness, hotness, anything that could indicate infection uh, in my does. Whereas my sheep, their udders tend to be much more tucked up under their body, so they don't have as much contact with the ground or dirt, and I don't have to worry about it as much, although it is a good idea to check their udders. Also, my goats are just a lot easier to handle, so I can just walk up and feel them. I don't have to restrain them to, to be able to check them. So it's turning out to be a very busy day indeed here on the farm. It looks like we're going to have yet a third doe that's going to deliver her babies today. This is Heidi. She's an Oberhostley. She's a Swiss uh, Alpine style breed of goat. They're a dairy goat. And she came to live here on the farm about a year and a half ago. She had one baby successfully last year. So she's an experienced mama. But she's looking really big to me this year, so I'm thinking she's probably gonna have two. I just wanna show you what the very early stages of labor look like. This doe has separated herself. She's the only one inside the barn right now. Sometimes my goats will just hang out in the barn, but today in particular, she didn't come out when we fed and I had to bring food to her. So I knew that was a really good sign that she was gonna deliver. I also know that she's in early labor because <laughs> She has this mucus coming out of her vulva. She's been urinating a lot and she's pushing a little bit. So she's probably feeling some early contractions. But we'll keep an eye on her and hopefully we'll have some more babies to show you soon. So the best part comes later in the day when they're all clean and dry and soft and warm and then you can snuggle them. <laughs> we like to start handling our kids right away so they're nice and friendly and easy to handle. Also so we can kind of daily check their weight and make sure that they're eating what they should. So that's going to do it for us today. We're going to of course continue to monitor these moms and babies but we've seen all that we wanted to see to make sure that everybody's doing great. So all in all, a really good day. Thanks for watching guys. And if you'd like to see how our lambing went this year, you can check out this video right here. Yeah, this is a good boy. Mom.